I think um, we see we see this topic, uh, you know, maybe from two similar but slightly different disciplines. Um, mine from a kind of spiritual and religious angle, where I watched that kind of performative optimism as a tool that believers use to create a very different future for themselves and prove God's blessing for their lives. But yours comes from a psychological angle, and we we both we both really meet at the beginning here, which is that toxic positivity is sort of fundamentally unhelpful. That's correct. You, really, when we force our difficult emotions aside, and these are difficult emotions that are born of the reality of life, of the reality that there is fragility, you know, that there is fragility, that fragility is interwoven between love and grief. Fragility is interwoven between the idea that we raise a child and then we say goodbye to that child in yeah. some form. There is fragility that is just so interwoven in life. And really my work is born of the idea that when we push aside the difficult emotions that come with the fragility of life, yeah. then what we also do is we push aside our mm. capacity to deal with the reality. Mm. Mm. When you say that, I can just think of so many examples where people thought that joy or optimism or the brighter emotions were going to help them. But I, I mean, I'm thinking of um, people I knew in in sort of positive thinking circles who really thought that that strategy would help them through the illness of someone else or themselves or help them through caregiving. It, I mean, it's often, and even as a patient, when I'd go to the hospital, I'd see it in little sticky notes around people's monitors. Like, you know, there's tomorrow's going to be better, like that, that the future was helping them deal with today. But then, I mean, I've been to prosperity gospel funerals and people who just, who can't get over the feeling that, that negative feelings and emotions are actually like a fundamental failure on their part. And as you so beautifully describe, it leads us to feel that we are not good enough or not enough, yeah. or that there's something wrong with us. And yet yeah. my work is really this work that says, this is normal. Yeah. This is normal when we're going through these difficult experiences and we have these emotions that have evolved, that are, are part of us as a humanity, mm -hmm. that are beautiful, that are essential, yeah. that these emotions are not to be done away with, they are rather to be connected with because yeah. they are something really important. Yeah, yes. Instead of being ashamed of our humanity, ashamed of our finitude, ashamed of our, you know, the ways that sometimes things break or they're we lose but are not losers. I mean the the amount of sort of normative language that that just gets heaped on suffering is is I think it, it's a cultural phenomenon in the United States. Yeah, I, I mean I described this a little bit in my TED talk where where I said, you know, the, this idea is actually it becomes a tyranny of positivity. Yes. And that sounds a little bit facetious, like how can positivity be a tyranny? Yeah. And yet when we think about it, when we think about uh, experiences that people have when they feel marginalized yeah. or when they are suffering yeah. or when they are dying yeah. and they are told to just be positive. Oh, it, it is the most profound way that we can not see another person. Yeah. Yeah. And so it is a tyranny and it's, a, and it's cruel and it's unkind and it's ineffective mm -hmm. and we do it to ourselves and we do it to other people. Mm. Mm. I hear you say, like, I when I, I remember reading that chapter in your book and thinking like, okay, she's asking for curiosity. I love when you say thinking about emotions as data, like, okay, I'm receiving information as opposed to, um, I mean, I just want to, I want to have a, a panic response to this bad feeling. I want to rush through it as quickly as I can. Or, I mean, I, I think of all the common responses people have to, um, to, you know, to even just like someone getting hurt, we're like, walk it off, you're okay, don't cry, like all the skipping to the end strategies. Often what we do when we have these difficult emotions is we might either bottle them, which is pushing them aside, rationalizing them, doing the false positivity, mm -hmm. or what we might do is we brood on them, we get stuck in them, we, we feel them so deeply that we are unable to move beyond them. And both of these are really difficult because yeah. 
when you bottle emotions, one of the metaphors that I talk about is when you bottle emotions, when you push them aside, it's almost like those emotions are still there, but you're carrying them so tensely and so astutely away from your body that you aren't really living life. You, 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 you so angry with something that's happened, but you're not having the conversation about it, Mm -hmm. that actually you start to shut down from people who might mean something to you or can actually help you. So bottling is one way that we deal with this. And we know that bottling doesn't work, that that we drop the books. You know, you, 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 you struggle, you push aside the difficult emotions, you decide you aren't going to have that conversation. And then what do you do? You either um, have what we call emotional leakage where the emotions come out over the Thanksgiving dinner table yeah, yeah, yeah. or we experience lower levels of well-being or we erode our own sense of self-worth because we are gaslighting ourselves. Yeah. So that's what happens when we bottle emotions. When we brood emotions, we're getting stuck in them. We're treating our emotions as fact. Mm-hmm. We're saying, I feel this. This is the only reality. And when we do that, we're holding the book so close to ourselves that we aren't able to look into the eyes of our child. We aren't able to feel their hand. We aren't able to be in the world. And we also aren't able to Mm -hmm. connect with parts of ourselves, Kate, that are also undeniable, which is our wisdom and our, our values and our beauty and and so really the idea here is you alluded to this earlier what i talk about is our emotions are data yeah. not directives yeah if we can show up to them with curiosity and with yeah. compassion yeah we can start saying what are they pointing to yeah. about what i care about what are they pointing to about my values so now we aren't being driven by the emotion rather we're stepping into a place of wisdom 